Hey, my name is Hubwood and today we are going to take a quick look at the new Dell G15 update which comes with a RTX 3050 and in my case an i7 1087H 8 core and 60 thread CPU, 16GB of DDR4 dual channel RAM with 3000MHz, but according to the Dell website most of the new G15 series actually use 3200MHz RAM, a 120Hz IPS matte 15 inch display with 215 nits, a fast 512 GB NVMe SSD and a huge and overpowered 240 watt PSU. In Europe the new Dell G15 versions with the RTX 3050 start around 899 euros in which case they come with a Ryzen 5 6 core and only 8 GB of RAM. The version I've tested cost 1100 euros by the way. On the official Dell US shop I've seen a $699 version on sale with the RTX 3050, 8GB of RAM but only a small 250GB SSD. Which would probably be a good deal if all you do is playing LiDAR, free to play and eSport titles that are ok with 8GB of RAM and don't eat up a lot of space. Remember the rule, if you buy a Dell, wait for a sale. Considering the cost. For people who buy such a laptop, price performance is usually key and it's important to check if you can get a similar laptop with a RTX 2060 for the same price, which could be possible. Now these Dell G15 all come with a full plastic case and the build quality is, well, I guess it's okay. But something tells me though that the material is kinda vulnerable to scratches and such. Now I am not going to talk about the laptop in detail today as most of it is exactly the same as in previous versions of the Dell G15 and the RTX 3050 here being the only new feature, but I'll quickly state some facts. Yes, you can open the laptop with one hand. And considering connections on the left side you'll get the LAN port and the headphone jack and at the back there is a power connector and an HDMI port a USB and a USB-C port. On the right side there are two additional USB ports and all of the USB ports are version 3.2 by the way and that's actually nice. The illuminated keyboard is okay in my opinion and the touchpad is very responsive and actually has a nice clicking feel. Now the performance of these new RTX 3050 and RTX 3050 Ti depends a lot on the TDP meaning the amount of energy in watt they are allowed to draw from the laptop's mainboard. Unfortunately, you can't easily identify this TDP in most cases as it's not advertised prominently. In case of this laptop, I try to find out the TDP on Dell's website without any success. I then started a support chat with the result that the Dell staff member told me she couldn't tell me the TDP for this laptop. I also called the support hotline with the same or rather no result. I was pretty disappointed to say the least. Now checking the NVIDIA system info, it showed a maximum TDP of 90 watt, which as far as I know could only be a short time turbo TDP as there is no official 90 watt RTX 3050. Measuring the wattage in game via hardware info resulted in a power draw of mostly around 73 to 78 watt, with some exceptions above and below that. So it's either a 80 watt version without dynamic boost or a 60 or 70 watt version with dynamic boost. If I'll ever find that out, I'll let you know in my pinned comment. And an important info for you, using Dell's performance mode in the Alienware command center would cause throttling the CPU. Balanced mode would surprisingly prevent the CPU from throttling, but at the same time provide less power for the GPU, resulting in a less overall gaming performance. So you would probably need to make your own profile with a 100% curve, I guess. In the Windows battery section, choosing performance was actually drastically reducing the performance by around 30%, which I accidentally discovered. Only using the Dell option was providing full performance. I'm assuming those issues should be fixed via updates and firmware upgrades uh, kind of soon. By the way, Heat and noise weren't really a problem and you can avoid thermal throttling. And the keyboard is actually really cool thanks to the vents above it. Now considering the battery. 
playing Red Dead Redemption 2 on battery at a brightness of 50% only got me around 50 minutes of battery time, but the performance was good enough to keep the FPS stable above 30. Watching YouTube at 50% brightness and 20% loudness with headphones and Wi-Fi got me close to 5 hours of battery life, so you could probably make it to 6 or 7 hours with light office work. Please note that the performance of the laptop still dropped quite a bit when the battery was very low, even when I plugged it in. The laptop obviously needs the battery to have at least some charge percentage around 25 to 30 before it provides full power, which is really weird, especially because it comes with a very mighty and overpowered 240 watt PSU and I didn't notice the battery lose any energy when gaming plugged in. But be aware that this is not a laptop that you should buy if you expect long battery times, especially when gaming. Now in Cinebench R23, the i7 scored around 10,600 points in the first run when testing the multi-core performance and around 1200 points when testing single core. I ran both tests with 100% fan speed. In 3D Mod Firestrike, the laptop achieved a total score of 12,221 with a graphic score of 13,602 and a physics score of 20,498. In Time Spy, I scored a total of 5,522 with a graphic score of 5,250 and a CPU score of 7,807. And in PC Mark 10, it achieved a total score of 5,444. Now I actually made a dedicated video for this laptop in which I've tested 30 different games for average FPS and 1% low. So you can check that out right now or after watching this video. I will link it at the end of this video and in the description as well. A side note, please be aware that the RTX 3050 only has 4GB of VRAM. That means that in more and more games you are forced to choose medium settings to avoid frame drops. And in the future you might even be forced to use low settings or in a worst case scenario even lower the resolution if the LSS or Fidelity FX aren't solving that issue. Even if the car would basically have enough raw power to run the game with enough FPS in those settings in the first place. Now let's fire up some games. In my opinion, Horizon Zero Dawn looks really beautiful even on medium settings, which are basically resembling the PS4 Xbox graphics. I saw an average of almost 60 FPS with a 1% low of 41. Personally, I'd be absolutely okay with playing that game that way. Frame times were okay, and capping the FPS at 60 could be a good idea in that case. In Red Dead Redemption 2, I saw an average of 54 FPS at medium settings with high textures and some anti-aliasing. The 1% low was 41 FPS and the frame times were okay. Please note that this game now supports DLSS and probably runs better on Vulkan. So I also tested it with Vulkan, which resulted in an average of 67 FPS and a 1% low of 25 FPS. Also activating DLSS on balance pushed the FPS a lot. I then saw an average of 81 FPS with a 1% low of 40 FPS, still on medium settings. So the RTX 3050 definitely benefits a lot from both Vulkan and DLSS. That's pretty awesome. For Overwatch I was using high settings at 100% resolution scaling, resulting in a great 200 FPS on average with a great 1% low of 135. It basically doesn't get much better, I guess, as ultra settings aren't really noticeable in such a fast-paced team shooter. Next, in PUBG I was using high settings and getting an awesome 119 FPS on average with a 1% low of 73. That's basically enough to fully utilize the 120Hz screen of the Dell G15. The experience was really good and I'm still amazed how much the performance improved for this game since 2017. It's finally in a state where you can professionally play it on an entry level gaming laptop. Next! I know everyone wants as much as possible FPS for Fortnite, so I chose the so called competitive settings meaning everything low except the epic view distance and 100% resolution scaling. 
Achieving an average of 247 FPS, I guess this would widely be accepted as a great performance. The 1% low was very high as well with 123 FPS. No complaints here. But to be honest, if I was playing it, I would probably choose some higher graphics until I reached an average of around 120 FPS, which could easily be achieved by using high settings or epic settings with DLSS activated on a RTX 3050 on the Dell G15. As a conclusion, I would say that this is a mediocre budget gaming laptop that actually has some medium issues considering the fan and performance settings yet. I hope they get fixed in the future though. This is not a high-end laptop, but the case and the build quality aren't bad. But you should always compare it to laptops with a RTX 2060, RTX 3060 or even the GTX 1660 Ti in terms of pricing. If they are the same price or cheaper, you might want to get one of these if you like the laptop they come with. So I would advise to only buy this laptop if you can get a bargain or if it's the only one in your region that you can afford with similar performance. If you like this content, please make sure to subscribe and like the video. Appreciate it. Thank you. Now that's all for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye and tschüss.